Wrong Earth, written by Tom Payer, art by Jamal Igle. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be breaking down the comic called The Wrong Earth. I bet most of you have never heard of this comic, but trust me, it is great, give it a chance. So this book is published by a comic book publisher called Ahoy Comics. They are a brand new comic publisher that started publishing books in 2018. And The Wrong Earth was their flagship book that they launched their company with. And it is great fun. I've read many Ahoy comic books, and I like quite a bit of them. Some of my favorites are one that's called High Heaven. It is written by the guy that wrote this book, Tom Payer. And it's about the afterlife. When you go to heaven, except heaven is kind of bureaucratic and shitty and not as great as you thought it would be. Mark Russell has a few books at Ahoy Comics, one called Second Coming, which is like his Jesus teaming up with a superhero book. It's a little ridiculous, but very fun. There's also another one called Billionaire Island he did, which was pretty great. There's also another comic called Planet of the Nerds. It's about these 80s jocks in high school, and they get frozen, and then they wake up in 2019 to a planet full of nerds where nerds are cool and they're jocks and they're trying to adjust. Anyway, so those are some of the Ahoy books I really like. Now, The Wrong Earth it has a really funny concept, okay? So, there is this hero, Dragonfly. He is basically a parody of Batman Bruce Wayne, okay? And this book basically takes the 1960s Adam West version of Batman and the dark, gritty, modern Batman, like you would see in the new Matt Reeves Batman movie. So we got these two Batman, and they switch universes. So the ridiculously campy Adam West Batman is in this modern, dark, gritty world, and the modern, dark Batman is in the ridiculous, silly, campy world of the Adam West Batman world. And hilarity ensues. This book is a great teardown of Batman, poking fun at various Batman tropes, as well as a celebration of Batman. All right, let's dive into it. The Wrong Earth, Issue 1. This book is essentially a parody of Batman. Our Batman hero is named Dragonfly, and his alter ego is that of billionaire Richard Fame instead of Bruce Wayne. Dragonfly's sidekick, essentially his Robin, is named Stinger and he has the alter ego of that of Chip Andrews. Dragonfly's Joker-type villain is named Number One, and instead of being in Gotham City, Dragonfly operates out of Fortune City. This book is constantly going to be jumping between two of these parallel worlds, so it's important you remember which world is which. So our two worlds are Earth Alpha and Earth Omega. Earth Alpha always has a white background, and Earth Omega always has a black background. Earth Alpha is basically the Adam West version of Batman's universe in a way. So it's in that campy Adam West style, and the tone is very sunny, orderly, optimistic, and the stakes are usually pretty low. And Stinger, the sidekick, is alive and well and the villains are all campy and ridiculous. And in this world, Dragonfly is a duly deputized officer of the law, and he works closely with the police. Also, Dragonfly's name is Dragonfly Man. He has the man as part of his name. Whereas on Earth Omega, it is just Dragonfly. Earth Omega is more in the style of what you would think of when you think of a modern Batman. It's dark, gritty, rainy, tragic, morally gray. Stinger, the sidekick, is dead. <laughs> and the villains are all dark and violent. So think of the new Matt Reeves Batman movie or most of modern Batman comics. And Dragonfly in this world is constantly at war with the police, which are all corrupt. With all that now established, let's dive into the story. The story begins on Earth Alpha which is the campy Adam West Batman-style world. Dragonfly Man and his trusted sidekick, Stinger, are tied to a table, and a laser death trap is working its way down to kill them. 
they were in a death trap called the Mirror Oven, courtesy of the villain known as Number One. The villain Number One is with his main sidekick, the female villain named Deuce, or Number Two. Number One also has various other dumb henchmen named Number Three, Four, and Five. Number One is gloating to Dragonfly Man through a microphone that, while he is tied up, him and his henchmen are stealing paintings from the museum, and they are replacing those paintings with paintings of himself, Number One! Number One says the museum really should be thanking him. Dragonfly Man replies, You narcissistic near do -well? What satisfaction do you derive from these conceited crimes? Number One, he leaves with his henchmen, but he tells Dragonfly Man, who is entrapped in the mirror oven, to keep cool, and then he laughs maniacally as he walks away. Only to discover, though, on the next page, that somehow Dragonfly Man and Stinger have escaped, and they have shown up right in front of Number One to confront him. Dragonfly Man then explains how he escaped, he says. You emptied our gear gauntlets of crime-fighting equipment, but in the melee I managed to grab Number Three's pin he wears, and conceal it in between my cheek and gums. I then managed to forcefully eject it, targeting a weak spot in your wall of mirrors. And your devilish heat lamp did the rest. Stinger then chimes in and says, Yeah! The tiny exposed patch of wall went up like tissue paper. Dragonfly man, you an egomaniac like you would never obey municipal building codes. They then all begin fighting. We now jump over to Earth Omega. It is raining and dark. Dragonfly is solo fighting number one's henchmen. The fighting is brutal. Dragonfly, he gets hit in the head with a baseball bat and he spits blood. Dragonfly then sprays fire out of his wrists and burns the henchmen to death, killing them. Even modern Batman usually doesn't kill, but this Dragonfly does, apparently. Dragonfly then enters a nearby building to look for number one. Eventually, he finds him. This number one has a one scarred on his face. It kind of reminds me of that cringy Jared Leto Joker with all the tattoos and everything. Number one is getting blood intravenously from a young man named Jordan Reese. For some reason, he wants that young blood in his body. Number one says to Dragonfly, No judging. All that healthy young blood crashing around inside someone so unimportant. You can't blame me for helping myself. Dragonfly tussles with number one a bit, and he eventually grabs him and is going to arrest them as they are walking. Another one of Number One's henchmen jumps out and tackles Dragonfly. Number One then runs and escapes, and he runs right into a mirror. Somehow the mirror is magical and it teleports him off to another dimension. Back over to Earth Alpha. We see that version of Number One. He also escapes into a mirror on his side, and it teleports him elsewhere and the Dragonfly Man of Earth Alpha chases him through that mirror. And then, after that, number one of Earth Omega, he then walks through the mirror and is now in Earth Alpha himself, and he is face to face with Stinger. So this more evil, dark number one notices Stinger and says, Look who's alive! and he grabs a shard of glass and stabs Stinger in his belly and Stinger falls down to the ground. Deuce, seeing the Omega number one, is surprised that he stabbed Stinger. She says, Oh, Onesie, what did you do? He's just a kid, what happened to you? Number one replies, Don't call me that stupid name. He then pushes Deuce to the ground and he walks off. Then at that moment, Dragonfly of Earth Omega walks through the mirror of Earth Alpha, and he is now there in that world too, and he notices Deuce attending to Stinger on the ground. Now in his world, in Dragonfly's world, his partner Stinger is dead, so he is surprised now to see Stinger alive on the ground. It is at that moment the cops arrive on the scene. 
Dragonfly in his world is used to warring with the police and fighting them and trying to end their corruption, and they are usually never any help. As the cops in this world start closing in on him, Dragonfly is getting ready to fight. But when the cops finally run in through the door, they are super supportive. And they see Dragonfly and tell him, I should have known you'd take care of this rotten bunch before we got here. Noble crime fighters, I pray we never take for granted the perils you face on this city's behalf. The cops then, seeing injured Stinger on the ground, tells Dragonfly Man, The boy will get the best care, sir, and once he pulls through, I know the mayor will want to award you both medals of valor. Dragonfly, not used to this support from the police, says, What the hell is going on here? Alright, so to recap. Dragonfly and number one of each Earth have switched places. And now the carefree, upbeat Dragonfly Man and number one of Earth Alpha have found themselves now over in the dark, gritty world of Earth Omega. And the dark, gritty version of Dragonfly and number one from Earth Omega are now in the ridiculous, campy world of Earth Alpha. We now jump over to that dark Earth Omega world now and we see Dragonfly Man come across Jordan Reese, and he comments, Great Scott! Dragonfly Man then hears the police pull up to the building, and he comments, It's the police! It's a miracle, young friend! Salvation has arrived! Dragonfly Man then runs outside and tells the police, Officers, this is Dragonfly Man, priority one! Teenager down, I repeat! This is Dragonfly, the police though, then shoot Dragonfly Man, and Dragonfly Man goes down and he appears dead. The two police officers, they then discuss amongst themselves. They can't believe they finally got him. They remove Dragonfly Man's mask and recognize him as Richard Fame, the famous Wall Street billionaire guy. Dragonfly Man, he then begins waking up. The cops, realizing that they have a rich guy in front of them, tells Dragonfly Man you've been shot, and we're gonna get you medical attention, okay? And then you're gonna give us what we need. Money. Issue 2 Back over on Earth Alpha, the dark, more modern Dragonfly is at the hospital. He can't believe his partner Chip Andrews, aka Stinger, is alive on this world. Dragonfly actually tears up a bit. Back over to Earth Omega. The cops are looking at Dragonfly Man who has passed out. The one cop says to the other, We can't get money from a corpse, call an ambulance. Dragonfly Man, he then hops back up to life, and he kicks the two police officers and takes them down. And then he tells them, You should be ashamed. The good citizens of Fortune City entrust you with their safety and you repay them with perfidy. Dragonfly Man then calls into police dispatch and tells them, Dispatch, this is Dragonfly Man. A teenager has been the victim of a horrific bloodletting. You must dispatch a medical team to the old abandoned gear factory on Geeds and Fayette Street. There's no time to lose. Dragonfly Man with both dirty cops walks them over to his car, which he calls the Dragon Wagon. He puts them in the back. What's kind of amusing is that the car here is very militaristic and tank-like, which is kind of a parody of modern Batman's Batmobile. Now Dragonfly Man, even though he may seem a little silly and aloof, he is smart, and he realizes that he is in an alternate universe, and he understands that this mirror is what transported him here. When he looks at the Dragon Wagon of this world, he says, I'm guessing that absurdly militarized vehicle is the Dragon Wagon of this cracked mirror universe. Before Dragonfly Man leaves the scene, he goes back to visit that teenager Jordan Reese that was injured, and he gives Jordan a way to signal him by way of a Dragonfly symbol on Jordan's hand. He tells him, I don't know if you can hear me, son, but help is on the way. If anyone further mistreats you, anyone at all, signal me. Dragonfly Man, he also takes that magical mirror that transported him to this universe with him. He's going to see if he can figure out how to activate it later 
and get back to his home world. In the dragon wagon, as Dragonfly Man is driving the dirty cops back to a secret hideout, the cops ask, We shot you. I saw you bleed. Why aren't you dead like you ought to be? Dragonfly Man explains, It's quite simple, really. When I arrived at the old abandoned gear factory, I sensed that the air was thick with menace, so I swallowed a precautionary anti-bullet antidote capsule, a compound of my own devising. It transmutes the metals commonly found in bullets into a protein that heals wounds in mere minutes. Now we know, of course, this is a ludicrous explanation. There is no such thing as anti-bullet antidote capsules, but keep in mind this is the campy Adam West Earth Alpha version of Dragonfly Man, and he has all sorts of ridiculously stupid gadgets that do all sorts of wondrous things. We jump back over to Earth Alpha. The dark, gritty dragonfly is in the secret base of that Dragonfly Man's world, which is called the Bug House. The Bug House would be comparable to Batman's Batcave. The Bug House is in the secret attic of Fame Tower. Dragonfly is inspecting the magic mirror. He then looks around the secret headquarters and is surprised to see the dragonfly of that world has a trophy case. Dragonfly asks himself, this guy keeps trophies? All of a sudden, a video communication screen flips on. Talking to Dragonfly are president of the bank named Henry Noble, which I found hilarious is wearing a sash that says president on it. Imagine if you were the president of a company and you wore a sash that said president on it. That would be pretty silly. <laughs> and then there is Mayor Shankford. They are speaking to Dragonfly and they tell him, Alarming news, Dragonfly man. Triviac is back to bedevil us. He's already sent one of his blasted trivia questions to taunt us about his next spectacular jewel robbery. His trivia question was, what popular movie musical directed by John Huston? Now, before I continue, I just want to explain that this Triviac is basically a ripoff of the Riddler, except that instead of obtuse riddles, he asks trivia questions, which I think is pretty funny. Dragonfly, he cuts them off mid-question, and he says to the bank president and the mayor, I know you. On Dragonfly's more dark, gritty world, Henry Noble, the president of the bank, was arrested for embezzling funds, and Mayor Shankford was arrested for soliciting prostitutes. Of course, I'm sure on this world they are upstanding citizens. The bank president and mayor ask Dragonfly, Are you quite alright, Dragonfly man? You act like you didn't expect to see us. Dragonfly, confused, asks, What kind of hero takes orders from a banker? Once again, this series is pointing out some of the ridiculous aspects of the old Adam West Batman TV show. The mayor, defending the bank manager, says, you make it sound corrupt, but surely there is no authority more legitimate than one to whom we entrust our very finances. Now, as to Triviac's diabolical clue, what popular movie musical, Dragonfly, he cuts them off again, he says. I'm not wasting resources going after this Triviac, not when number one, that maniac, is on the loose. Back on Earth Omega. The secret base there is called the Dragonfly's Perch. Dragonfly Man throws the dirty cops in a holding cell in the base there. The cops tell him this is kidnapping. You can't keep us here. Dragonfly Man disagrees though, he explains. Said the blackmailer, unfortunately for you, I am authorized by state, local, and federal authorities to detain criminals at my discretion. I guess apparently on his world he has that power. The cops respond, I never heard of that. How long do you think you can keep us here? Dragonfly Man tells them, until I know what to do with you. In the meantime, I can't have you running loose with knowledge of my true identity. Dragonfly Man then starts investigating the Dragonfly of this world's secret headquarters. He starts speaking into a recording device to collect his thoughts, he says. Dragonfly Man, Crime Fighting File, 888 
I'm in my counterpart's secret lair on this dismal duplicate of my home planet. His sensibility leans military, yet he doesn't appear to have connections to any authorities. That thought somehow fills me with great sadness. Dragonfly Man then inspects the magical mirror that transported him here. He can't figure out how to activate it to get back to his own world. So he then proceeds on a mission to find the number one of his world that he escaped into this world. He suspects if he gets that number one, that number one might be able to get him back home. So Dragonfly Man, he gets ready to head out. Before he does, though, he figures he should go see his sidekick, Stinger, of this world. He goes to knock on Stinger's bedroom door, but he changes his mind. He says, oh, never mind. I'll let him sleep. A growing crime fighter needs his good night's rest. If he's to fight again tomorrow. Inside Stinger's room on this world, we see a memorial to him, to the fallen hero. Dragonfly Man still doesn't know that Stinger of this world is dead. Issue 3 Over in Earth Alpha, the light can't be Earth. Miss Deuce is on trial for her crimes. Her lawyer argues that she should be let free. Even though she used to work for the dastardly number one, when she had the opportunity to flee the crime scene before Dragonfly Man arrived, she instead stayed behind to take care for Stinger, who had been stabbed. Her lawyer says this showcases Miss Deuce's true nature and her angelic mercies. The judge and all the lawyers are looking Deuce up and down in a kind of pervy sexual way. Surely someone as attractive as her must not be bad? The district attorney says, She is a most impressive and lovely young creature, your honor. The judge convinced says, Hmm, then the case is dismissed. Fortune City owes you a great debt, Miss Deuce. The other henchmen, number three, four, and five, ask if they can go free as well? But the judge and district attorney, who are not attracted to them, say, No, you're ruthless henchmen! Miss Deuce, though, she decides to sweet-talk the judge, and she tells him, Judge, permission to say a little something? And the judge says, It's highly irregular, but I'll allow it for you, my dear. Deuce tells the judge, Sir, these fellas are like brothers to me, the only family I got in the big bad city. If they go to the joint, I'll have no one to look out for me. I won't last a week. The judge, somehow convinced, says, Hmm, in that case, all charges are dismissed. <laughs> oh man, the legal system on Earth Alpha is flawed indeed. Deuce and 3, 4, and 5 are all let free. When they get outside the courthouse, the other henchmen all thank Deuce. Number 5 tells her, Duh. I didn't know you had the gift of gab. I always thought number one kept you in the gang just for, you know. I assume sexual purposes. <laughs> Deuce tells them, well, guess what? You're in my gang now. So with number one gone and number three, four, and five pretty much doofuses, Deuce will now be the leader. Elsewhere at the bank president's office, they are trying to figure out Triviac's clue. The mayor reads the clue to the bank president. He says, What popular movie musical directed by John Huston is based on a comic strip by Harold Gray? The mayor and the bank president are unable to solve the trivia question. In their frustration, they comment, Arg! Such a vicious, baffling conundrum! The answer to the trivia question is the movie Annie, which came out in 1982. If they were able to solve Triviac's dastardly trivia question, then they would know at this moment Triviac is at a dining club named Annie's Exclusive Supper Club, where a whole bunch of millionaires are taking part in some sort of charity auction. Triviac, he threatens to shoot one millionaire for every trivia question he has posed that he cannot answer. Still in Earth Alpha, Dragonfly of Earth Omega is 
driving around in the ridiculous version of the dragon car of this world. Dragonfly is driving around and he can't believe how well everyone is treating him here. He comments to himself, They love me here, those morons. A police officer waves Dragonfly down. The police officer tells Dragonfly to follow him to this nearby church. When they get inside the church, Dragonfly sees that number one of his world has made his way here, and he has brutally killed many innocents in the church, cutting up their bodies into small pieces. It is very horrific. Dragonfly phones the police department to tell them about these recent bodies he discovered. However, instead of talking to the police department, they redirect his phone call to the bank president, <laughs> which annoys Dragonfly to no end. The bank president and mayor tell the Dragonfly about Triviac holding Fortune City's leading citizens at gunpoint at Annie's exclusive supper club. The mayor and the bank president seem to have figured out the clue of Annie's. Dragonfly he is getting annoyed. He says he has to go after number one who is butchering people. He doesn't have time for Triviac. But eventually he gives in and says, All right, fine. If I save your rich friends, will you start listening to me? Over at the supper club, Triviac is trying to answer a trivia question. The question is, what was singer-actress Courtney Love's birth name? Triviac, he is thinking of an answer. But then he gets interrupted by Dragonfly. And Dragonfly, what does he do? He pulls out a gun and mows down and murders Triviac on live TV. Everyone on TV can't believe what Dragonfly just did. I mean, this is what Dragonfly does on his home world. He just straight up murders the criminals. Dragonfly then talks to the television and says, Now if you excuse me, I have real work to do. If you see this mass murderer number one around, get to a safe place and call the police. Back over to Earth Omega, the dark, gritty Earth. Dragonfly Man has finally discovered that Stinger is dead on this world. He asks the police that he has in custody in his hideout how the boy Stinger died here. The cops tell him that Stinger committed suicide. Dragonfly Man can't believe it. He walks off. The cops still in a prison type cell are eating and drinking some things that Dragonfly Man has given him. And they comment that the water is terrible and black. Is Dragonfly poisoning them? Dragonfly Man, he walks the streets of Fortune City. And he is sad ever since he found out Stinger committed suicide here. And he is also sad how all of the citizens seem to be very scared of him. As he is walking around, everyone's kind of running in fear, and they cower, and they walk away from him. Dragonfly Man is not used to this fear. He is used to people loving him. Dragonfly Man walks into a coffee shop, and the clerk pulls a shotgun on him. That is how scared and untrusting of Dragonfly the people are here. Dragonfly Man grabs the man's gun out of his hands and asks him, Why? Why are guns the solution to everything in this awful place? In my life, on my world, I've been chased by a massive bowling ball, fed into a giant sewing machine, boiled in an oversized percolator. But I would choose any one of those terrible ordeals over five more minutes in this horror. Do you hear me? I am done! Fortunately, I came here with a man who knows the way home. Back there, he was the worst person imaginable, but here? Probably not in the top hundred million. Probably not as evil as a typical coffee shop owner. So I'm going to find him and make sure he's safe. And then number one and I will bring each other home. Elsewhere, we see the number one of Earth Alpha, who has made his way into Earth Omega. He gets shot in the head and killed by number one's henchmen of this world. The two henchmen discuss and the one asks, what do you shoot him for? And the other henchman answers, Hostages are a chore. Besides, we needed to concentrate, looking for the boss, and for the bug-eyed maniac who incinerated our guys. Not jerking around with every cosplayer who shows up and starts giving orders. 
So it is kind of amusing that the henchmen of Earth Omega are so unimpressed with the number one of Earth Alpha, they just immediately murder him because he is annoying to them and weak. The henchmen then talk to Jordan Reese, the young man that their number one was siphoning blood from earlier. They ask him what a dragonfly gave him earlier. Jordan, holding up a symbol on his hand, answers, He gave me a way to signal him. The henchmen decide to use Jordan and this signal to set a trap for Dragonfly. Back over to Earth Alpha, Deuce is talking to her henchmen and tells them they need to find Dragonfly's secret base so they can get the mirror back and bring back the number one of their world. It is at that moment, the more evil number one of Earth Omega arrives and asks them how they plan on doing that. Issue 4 We are still on Earth Alpha. Stinger is in the hospital and he sees Dragonfly murder Triviac on TV. Stinger can't believe it. He says, This isn't happening. It's trick photography. Somebody's fooling everybody. Stinger is content to leave the hospital and try to get to the bottom of this. Dragonfly Man needs him. Back over to Deuce at her hideout. Omega number one asks Deuce, what is her plan to retrieve the teleport mirror? Deuce answers that they're gonna sneak into Dragonfly Man's headquarters and grab it. Easy. Number one asks, and how do you know where that is? Deuce answers, oh, she figured out Dragonfly Man's secret identity a long time ago. Number one is furious to hear this. He slaps Deuce in her face and calls her a liar, he says. I've never been able to penetrate the secret of Dragonfly's identity, but I'm supposed to believe a bubble-headed, gum-chewing girl outdoes me? Deuce does not like being slapped around, so she headbutts number one and tells him, Yup, you think you're so big? I've been putting up with you and your type forever, and I'm sick of it. On this earth, honey, from now on, Deuce is number one. She then kicks number one a few more times and knocks him out. Dragonfly, he goes down to the bank to confront the bank president and mayor. In the bank, there is this massive piggy bank in the center, filling with pennies for the homeless. The sign reads, Pennies for the Penniless. Dragonfly, he walks right up to the bank president and mayor. He's angry with them, he says. You use the police and the courts solely to protect the property rights of your fat cat millionaire friends, while violence feasts on the people, like this church choir gutted by the maniac number one I'd warned you about. The bank president and mayor then begin laughing maniacally. Dragonfly is confused. The bank president then blows a special knockout gas into Dragonfly's face and it knocks Dragonfly out temporarily. Why did the bank president and mayor do this? Because they are not who they say they are. They remove their masks they are wearing and in typical Adam West Batman fashion, it is revealed they are really dumb villains part of a group called the Dastardly League and the real bank president and mayor are tied up in the closet. The members of the Dastardly League are Dr. Yo-Yo, Granny Oakley, The Queen of Crime, Toridor, and Chef Escargo. <laughs> so dumb. Jumping over to Earth Omega, Dragonfly Man decides to go undercover at a criminal bar called the Razor and Kidney to see if he can get info on where number one is so he can track down that teleportation mirror. Remember, this is the ridiculous Adam West version of Dragonfly Man. So when he wants to go undercover as a criminal in this bar, he decides to dress the part and puts on a stereotypical Halloween looking costume of what a bank robber would look like, complete with striped black and white shirt and plain white sack with a big dollar sign on it. <laughs> Everyone in the bar thinks he kind of looks ridiculous. Although a lot of the villains in this bar kind of look ridiculous themselves. 
there's one villain here named Cactus that is dressed like a cactus. Dragonfly Man, he is talking to the bartender who appears to be the deuce of this world. The bartender is very nice to Dragonfly Man. Dragonfly Man, talking to the bartender, says very loudly, trying to get the attention of everyone, Oh, um, I'm just looking to join a vicious gang and commit a few dastardly crimes. Before he can get an answer, though, eventually the cactus guy throws a punch at Dragonfly Man. And Dragonfly Man, before you know it, is in a fight with all the villains in the bar. And while he is taking them down, he is saying, Pow! Crack! Wham! Choom! Crunch! Which is, once again, typical Adam West stuff going on. Dragonfly Man, triumphant after beating all the villains, asks, Now, who's going to tell me the location of number one secret hideaway? He does not get an answer, though, and before he can stick around some more, the signal device he gave Jordan Reese earlier goes off. So Dragonfly Man decides to go and check on him. Before he leaves the bar, though, he tells the bartender, Young lady, you have a good heart, and your whole life's ahead of you. Don't waste it serving alcohol to miscreants. Then Dragonfly Man heads off. He eventually arrives at an abandoned strip mall, and there he finds Jordan Reese tied to a chair. Jordan tries to warn Dragonfly Man by telling him, Go away, man! Fast! Now! But it is too late. The building explodes, and they are both caught up in the flames. Back on Earth Alpha, which is known for its villains using convoluted stupid death traps, we see the Dastardly League have trapped Dragonfly in that massive piggy bank, and they expect the pennies will smother and crush him to death slowly over time. As they are watching him, they are mocking him, saying, Those pennies are crawling with germs! Chef Escargot says, Perhaps it is fitting that the champion of property laws will rest for eternity in a piggy bank. When Dragonfly eventually wakes up and sees where he is, he comments, You gotta be kidding me. Elsewhere on Earth Alpha, Deuce and her henchmen are now in the bug house, the secret lair of the Dragonfly Man of this world. They have found the magic teleportation mirror. They wake the evil number one up, and Deuce tells him to use the mirror and get off of this earth forever. Number one calls them idiots, he says. You never think outside your game of cops and robbers. You don't even wonder about the mirror, who made it, what it means for your world, my world, others. Deuce, she doesn't care. She tells number one to go. Number one says, very well. And he starts walking towards the mirror. But before he can approach it, the mirror smashes and breaks into many pieces. It broke because Stinger used his slingshot to destroy the mirror. Stinger announces, Villains in the bunkhouse! How? Deuce asks him, Stinger, what did you do? Stinger answers, I stopped that man who stabbed me from escaping. Now you're all in big trouble. Deuce replies, Stinger, no, Dragonfly Man needed that mirror to get home. You just trapped him in another dimension forever. Stinger, to this says, what? No, it's not possible. Deuce, a little saddened by this, says, I always kind of hoped him and me had a chance, you know? So Deuce is kind of revealing she had some romantic feelings for Dragonfly Man. Issue 5 on Earth Omega, Dragonfly Man helps Jason out of the exploded building. When Jason asks how they both survived the explosion, Dragonfly Man explains, Through alertness and preparation, the two sharpest arrows in a crime fighter's quiver. En route in the Dragon Wagon, I used the remote Dragon computer to trace the building's title history. It was once I learned a facility for the sale of dynamite. I reasoned that an evildoer with a perverse sense of humor, an affliction common to criminals, might have chosen this particular site for a similarly blast-related purpose. So I took the precaution of spraying myself with a double-strength, long-lasting explosion repellent. 
Thus protected, I was able to shield you with my body. Once again, a ridiculous device on Dragonfly Man's utility belt saved the day. Back on Earth Alpha, Dragonfly is trapped in that gigantic piggy bank. He places some plastic explosives on the little glass window and breaks it open with a blast. And the dastardly league who were mocking him outside the piggy bank fall to the ground. Dragonfly, annoyed by this whole situation, says, Screw this. I'm not playing your game. If you want to steal jeweled animal statues from museums, knock people out with purple gas, and send cryptic clues to the police, fine. Suit yourself. I'm busy. Just stay out of my way if you don't want what Triviac got. At the bug house, Stinger is trying to rebuild the teleportation mirror and place all of the pieces back together in the mirror to get the teleportation working again. That way, the dragonfly man of his world will have a way back here. Elsewhere, the dark, gritty dragonfly that escaped from the piggy bank is now driving around Fortune City. He is driving that silly version of the dragonfly mobile of this world. Dragonfly comments to himself, this guy, he labels everything ejector seat, intruder alarm, dragon computer. What if the computer is as conveniently random as everything else on this world? Dragonfly clearly thinks this world is ridiculous, but he decides to test it out. He says to the car computer, <clears throat> Computer, calculate the whereabouts of the villain known as number one. Dragonfly, not expecting this to work, is surprised when it does. The computer in the car replies, beep beep, analyzing, beep beep, number one is in the bug house, beep beep. Dragonfly immediately swerves and begins driving as fast as he can back to his secret headquarters. Back on Earth Omega, the dark world, Dragonfly Man is driving around Jordan Reese, whom he recently saved from the explosion at the strip mall. Dragonfly Man expresses that at first he was confused about this world, how dark and dangerous it is, but now he is resolved to faithfully execute his campaign against crime. It doesn't matter where he is or who he is with, he still has a job to do. Jordan, he then decides to explain his origin story to Dragonfly Man. He explains how his dad abused him emotionally and physically. And one day, Jordan and his dad were working in his dad's auto repair shop and number one and his gang came in to rob the place. Jordan's dad reached for his shotgun, but Jordan actually blocked his dad from doing so. He wanted the robbers to mess his dad up maybe even kill him. And that is what they did. Number one killed Jordan's dad. And when it was all over, number one called Jordan his little orphan, and he took him in. It was weird, but Jordan didn't seem to really care. Number one would help himself to some of Jordan's blood on occasion. And after he'd put on a big show of being all energized, he'd say that Jordan was good medicine and he'd give Jordan money to spend. It was messed up, but it was still better than being home. Once number one disappeared though, the rest of number one's henchmen kind of had it in for Jordan. Dragonfly Man asks Jordan if he happened to see the number one of his world there. Jordan says that he thinks he did. He saw a weird guy show up and start giving orders and the gang killed him. Jordan asks, was the man a friend of yours? And Dragonfly Man replies, no, he owed me a ride home, though. Back over to Earth Alpha at the bug house. Stinger is working on the mirror. He almost has it all put back together. Eventually, Dragonfly arrives. He begins fighting with Deuce and Number One. Number One decides to take his chances with the mirror, which is roughly put back together, but the pieces are still shattered a bit. When number one jumps through the mirror, there is a problem. All the cracks and pieces of the mirror begin cutting him up as he goes through it. And number one says, One Prime, hear me! I'm begging you, make it stop! 
Don't let this happen to me. Not to me. Not me. And then number one dies a brutal, gory, bloody death as his body is cut into many pieces by the mirror. Dragonfly, Stinger, and Deuce stand over the mirror and comment on it. Deuce says, What a disgusting way to go. Dragonfly replies, But not undeserved. What do you suppose he meant by one prime when he said that? Stinger, he doesn't care though. He is angry because he saw Dragonfly kill Triviac on TV. He says that Dragonfly is a killer. Now with this mirror broken, Stinger is worried because he feels it is his fault it is broken and now the real Dragonfly man will never be able to make it back home. Stinger, he starts losing it. He says, ah, I hate myself. I broke the mirror. I wish I were dead. Dragonfly gets serious all of a sudden. He is listening to Stinger say that he wants to kill himself. And this really hits home for Dragonfly because the Stinger of his world died by committing suicide. And he does not want to see that happen again here. He wants to make Stinger feel better. So he decides to make up a convoluted story. He tells Stinger, listen, You've been deceived by, um, dastardly villains. Of course I'm the real Dragonfly Man. And of course I didn't kill anyone. Triviac is alive. He's in the witness protection at a secret location under a new name. He turned state's evidence against the Dastardly League. For his own safety, the world must believe he's dead. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you before, but I was following a direct order of secrecy from the President of the United States. Deuce, listening to this, doesn't believe this ridiculous story for one second, but Stinger kind of does. Back over to Earth Omega at the Bug House, Dragonfly Man reveals his secret identity as Richard Fame, the famous Wall Street guy, to Jordan. Jordan asks, I always heard Richard Fame was like this greedy predator. Dragonfly answers, That was merely a bluff to deflect suspicion from my dual identity. Never take greedy Wall Street predators at face value, Jordan. Some of us might be your allies. <laughs> Dragonfly Man leaves the room for a moment to fetch something. While Jordan is standing around, he sees those two dirty cops that are being held prisoner. He asks them, are you guys prisoners? And one of the dirty cops says to Jordan, what the fuck's it look like? Listen, my partner's real sick. I think that fucker's poisoning us. Unlock this door. I'll give you 10 grand. Dragonfly man returns and presents Jordan with a stinger uniform. And he asks Jordan if he wants to become the new stinger. Should they partner up? Issue 6, The Conclusion. Continuing on in Earth Omega, Dragonfly Man and the new Stinger, Stinger 2, are fighting the rest of Number 1's henchmen, and they successfully knock them all out. And Dragonfly Man slaps some handcuffs on them. Stinger, he is grateful. He feels without Dragonfly, he'd be dead. These henchmen would have eventually hunted down and killed him. As they are walking back to the dragon buggy, Stinger questions Dragonfly about the dirty cop prisoners he is keeping in his cell. Dragonfly Man answers, Now, Stinger 2, that's a necessary precaution. Those two corrupt officers know my secret identity. Stinger says, I think one of them is dying. Dragonfly Man answers, If he requires medical attention, he'll have it. Stinger asks, you can't just incarcerate people. Who do you think you are? Dragonfly Man answers, Stinger 2, I am but an ordinary campaigner for righteousness. If Ego played a part, I would certainly not take such pains to conceal my true identity. I hope we can discuss this more calmly and rationally back at the bug house. A nutritious meal might unruffle your... Stinger cuts him off and tells him, too late. I called the police, told them about the prisoners, and where the bug house is. Dragonfly Man is shocked. 
Did Stinger just compromise his secret identity? Back over to Earth Alpha. Stinger on that world believed the ridiculous story Dragonfly made up, and he hugs him and says, I believe you, Dragonfly man! You're no killer! Deuce, still there, tells Dragonfly, Like any of this matters, Mr. Richard Fame, even if I can't prove you're a scary copy of the real thing, your so-called campaign against crime is kaput. My boys and I know the real Dragonfly Man's secret identity, and it ain't safe with me. Dragonfly asks her what she plans on doing with this info. She says, I don't know. Maybe I'll just auction it off to the highest bidder. Dragonfly says he has a simple solution to this problem. Deuce worries Dragonfly might kill her. Instead, he offers her a bribe. He says, what if I'm the highest bidder? Bitter. Stinger, not liking this, says, You can't give blackmail money to criminals! Dragonfly answers, Remember your Shakespeare, son. To do a great right, do a little wrong. Plus, if you'd been some of the places I have, you'd know some criminals aren't so bad. He says this looking at Deuce, implying that he's not really that angry with her for her criminal ways. Stinger questions, But they'll never be satisfied! They'll keep threatening to expose you, and you'll have to keep paying them forever! Dragonfly to this says, Meh, I can afford it. He then asks Deuce, So what do you say, Deuce? Do you want to spend the rest of your life running from the law, or lounging in a penthouse in Monaco? Deuce decides to take Dragonfly up on his offer. Back over to Earth Omega. The rest of the police have arrived at the bug house, and they free the dirty cops that... Dragonfly Man was keeping as prisoners. Well, that Dragonfly Man tries the same thing his counterpart just did on Earth Alpha. He decides to do a little bribing. He pays off the cops. The chief of police asks, you're not serious with this, are you? Dragonfly Man replies, a campaigner against crime is always serious. I repeat, you and every officer present will share not only in this considerable sum, but I will match it to establish a fund whose generous interest you can draw for as long as my true identity and this location remain secret. Stinger asks, what are you doing, Dragonfly? Why would you pay off these crooked cops? Dragonfly Man answers, remember your Shakespeare, son. To do a great right, do a little wrong. Dragonfly Man, now aware that one of his prisoners was getting sick from drinking the water, says, I will also arrange for these two officers I detained to be examined and treated at Fortune City's most exclusive clinic, at my expense, of course. One of the cops that was held prisoner says, No! It's a trap! He's a maniac! Don't let him send us away! He poisoned us and almost killed Wheeler over there! Dragonfly Man defending himself says, I never poisoned anyone. The cop continues saying, Check the drinking water. It's like frickin' battery acid. Dragonfly Man insists, That is not my doing, I assure you, but I will look into it. You have my word. The cop continues being angry and says, What's it gonna be? Are we gonna cover for our cop killer? What do you think will happen when we turn our backs on him? The police in the room look around at each other and think about it. But then eventually the chief of police turns his pistol on that angry cop and tells him, Don't mess this up for us. It's a lot of money he's paying us. And the one dirty cop that was really angry says, Fine. Dragonfly Man then tells them, If that's settled and we're all in agreement, officers, get out. Afterwards, Dragonfly Man and Stinger head up to the roof of their base. Stinger asks if Dragonfly is upset with him for phoning the police earlier and, in a way, betraying him. Dragonfly Man answers no. He says, Your so-called betrayal was the brave act of a young man trying to do the right thing. I could hardly wish for more in a partner. The two of them then decide to continue their crime-fighting work together, and they jump off a roof and begin gliding to the ground, and we get that stereotypical hero shot of the two of them coming down from the building. Back over to Earth Alpha. 
The dark, gritty dragonfly is getting used to what life is like for him in this world, and he kind of enjoys it. The mayor and the bank president are holding a ceremony for Dragonfly Man and congratulating him. Beside Dragonfly Man are Stinger and Deuce. The ceremony gets interrupted by a pie being thrown into the face of the mayor. We see Chef S. Cargo, the pie thrower, and the rest of the Dastardly League have crashed the ceremony. Dragonfly Man, Deuce, and Stinger begin fighting the Dastardly League and start taking them down. In the middle of the fight, Chef Escargot has a mallet in his hand, and he is going to swing it down on Stinger's head. But luckily, Dragonfly stops him in time. Dragonfly then drags Chef Escargot into a side alley and tells him, You swung that mallet right at my kid's head. You could have killed him. Chef Escargo starts apologizing, but Dragonfly, who remember, is the dark, gritty one, tells the chef, That's a mistake you don't come back from. You're going to die. He injects some venom from his suit into the body of Chef Escargo, which will kill him. Dragonfly then says, And I'm gonna get away with it too, because dragon venom's untraceable, and because they love me here. So we see a little bit of that darkness within Dragonfly coming through. Dragonfly, he goes back out into the street and tells one of the police officers around, Officer, Chef Escargot is dead in the alley. You'll want to preserve the scene. The cop tells him, Oh, that culinary crook will trouble us no longer. Praise be! Deuce is a little skeptical. She asks, What did you do to him? Dragonfly answers, Nothing. He just collapsed. Probably ate too much of his own cooking. Speaking of which, dinner later. So we see some hints of a potential future romantic relationship between Dragonfly and Deuce. Stinger, he drinks some water from a water fountain and comments, Gah, this water tastes like battery acid. Now why does the water taste like battery acid? Well, the dirty cops on... Earth Omega said the same thing. On the final page, we jump over to a new Earth called Earth Zeta. It is a futuristic world where technology has thrived and global warming and pollution are non-existent. There is a press conference going on, and one of the journalists asks, Your secret processes have reversed carbon emissions nearly to zero, cleaned our water supply, solved our waste problem, are you ever going to tell us how you do it? The answer from an unknown speaker says, With mirrors. The journalist asks further, <laughs> Seriously though, you saved the world and everyone agrees on that. You can have any reward, any opportunity you choose. Nobel prizes, trillions in tech contracts, the presidency? The unseen voice answers, Those things all sound quite appealing naturally, but really... It's enough to be number one. And we see the number one of this Earth Zeta is in a position of power. He is the one that is behind all of this mere technology, teleportation stuff that has been going on. And he has been using the mirrors to clean his world and become a hero and slowly poison Earth Alpha and Omega with all the excess pollution and chemicals in his world. And with the reveal of this other Earth and this other number one, that is the end of Volume 1. Okay, so that was The Wrong Earth, and what a funny book this was. I loved it. I thought the artwork was great. I thought there were so many good jokes in here. I love that the Adam West version of Dragonfly Man is just so ridiculous. How he has an anti-bullet capsule that stops bullets, so stupid. His car is just ridiculous and has all these powers that don't make sense. The legal system is so dumb. The villains are so stupid. Triviac, what a funny twist on the Riddler. He's not telling you riddles, he's telling you trivia. Okay, <laughs> so funny. Oh man, great stuff there. And to juxtapose that with the dark, gritty version of Dragonfly, where the world is just gloomy and everything is the darkest version of everything, and the main villain, number one, has that cringy scar on his face. 
Oh, it's just such a funny comparison with the lighter version of that character. So, what a great concept for a book and lots of great jokes in here. Now, was every single thing in here executed perfectly? No, maybe not. I also sometimes had to take a little bit of a pause and try to remember, okay, we're in the silly world and we got the dark version of the character. Okay, all right, now we're in the dark world and we got the silly version of the character. Okay, I got to try to remember that as I'm reading the story. And it turns out I'm not the only one that would sometimes get a little bit confused by this because even the creators of the frickin' book made a mistake on one particular page where they labeled it Earth Alpha when they were, in fact, on Earth Omega. Anyway, on the whole, I thought this book was really great. I thought it had a pretty good ending, too, where we teased this number one on this other world that was kind of like this powerful man, and he is sort of using the mirrors to remove all sorts of chemicals and pollution from his world, so I like that kind of uh, setup there for future stories. I thought this book was good. I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Now, there is more Wrong Earth if you want to continue on with the story. I've read Volume 2, and it is not bad. Not my favorite, but I think it is worth checking out if you want to. But next week, I'm going to be covering a new book. I'm going to be covering Mark Wade's Irredeemable, which is an amazing series. It is about a evil Superman that starts kind of destroying the world. How do you stop him? It is going to be a movie on Netflix at some point in the future, so be sure to tune in for that next week because it is going to be an epic one. 